Okay guys, who wants to see even more small block Ford cylinder head testing? That's right, we've got group three. We've got the kind of big boys here. We're talking about cylinder heads that have intake ports measuring over 200 cc's, and in some cases, airflow exceeding 300 CFM. That means these heads will all support a ton of power. So not only do we step up in the cylinder heads, we also stepped up in our test motor. 393 cubic inch stroker 351 with a solid roller cam so we could take advantage of what all these heads had to offer. Let's start off by taking a look at the specs. We're going to take a look at the intake and exhaust flow, then follow that up with the power level. Let's find out. Just as we did in the first two groups, we're going to start off by taking a look at the specifications of each of the head that we ran in this group three, starting off with the stock E7TE iron head, the factory five liter Ford head. We also had Edelbrock Victor Jr. head, an Airflow Research 205 head, a Dart Pro 1 210 head, a Brodex Track 1 head, the M2, also a pair of heads from TripFlow, both the TFS High Port and the TFSR head. You can take a look at all the different chamber sizes. In this group, there wasn't as big of a disparity between the chamber sizes as there was in group two. You can take a look and see we range from maybe 58 cc's up to 62, so that's not a dramatic change. Big change in intake port volume, obviously, compared to the factory head. But you can take a look at the exhaust port volumes, the intake and exhaust valve sizes, um, various information on the springs, open pressure, uh, seat pressure, coil bind, and obviously the weight. So take a look at the specs, and then now we can get to the airflow data. Now we can take a look at the airflow data of each one of the cylinder heads, starting off with the intake flow on our group three heads. I know it says group two there, but <laughs> that's just because I didn't change the designation. These are all the group three heads, and you can take a look at the airflow ranging from uh, 50 thousandths lift all the way up to 700 lift, although we only went to a little over 600 lift on our camshaft, on our Extreme Energy uh, Street Roller camshaft that we ran. But you can kind of see whether or not the heads fall off past that point in the 650 and 700 lift range. Obviously, with these heads, you can use um, a lot more camshaft, and we could use a camshaft obviously bigger than 700 lift because most of these kept flowing up in the 700 lift range. So that's something to consider for you guys that are wanting to go with even more camshaft and with a wilder combination. So you guys can take a look at all the flow, compare them at all the lift ranges. And remember, we're not just looking at peak flow. Obviously, the flow number out here at 700 lift is not really relevant too much to our combination because we only had a 612, I think, and a 620 lift. So you can take a look at the 600 and maybe the 650 lift range and get an idea, but also take a look at the mid lift flow because that's kind of what really determines the power. I mean, when the valve opens and closes, it spends more time in this mid lift than it does at peak lift. So it's something to think about. Check out all the lift ranges of your favorite head and kind of correlate to that, that to the power gains. Now let's take a look at the exhaust flow. After you guys took a look at the intake airflow, this is the exhaust airflow for our group three heads. Again, it says group two, but it's <laughs> definitely group three. So we've got all the different heads and we compared like we did with the intake. We compared the exhaust flow from 50 thousandths lift all the way up to 700 thousandths lift. You can take a look and see who flows the most out at the peak and <laughs> you know, you guys can crown a winner for that. But remember, take a look at the mid lift flow and then also think about like we did with group two, um, if you find a cylinder head that has really good mid-lift exhaust flow, would you think that that one might benefit from different cam timing compared to the others? Maybe, they are, maybe their exhaust flow is more peaky. Maybe it's much better at the very low, uh, low lift numbers. Just take a look at all of that and try to you know, think about it and then compare it to the power gains that you saw, especially the you know, look through the whole torque curve and kind of see what's going on. See if there's a correlation between that torque curve and maybe the lift flow both on the uh, both on the intake and on the exhaust. Let's check out our power gains. In our third group of cylinder heads we stepped up once again in displacement and potential power output. We stepped up to a 392 or 393 inch motor depending on I guess how you round it. It was a four it was a 351 Windsor block 4030 bore and a 3.85 inch stroke. It had four draws and forged pistons. And once again, like we did with the heads in group two, the pistons had dual valve reliefs. In this case, it was to run the standard inline Windsor stuff and also a set of uh, trick flow TFS R heads, which were, as we know, you know, always had a reputation of being very powerful. So we ran those heads as well as a number of different inline valve heads. So we had the pistons to accommodate that. We also had a healthy camshaft in it, which was an Extreme Energy 286 cam. 
unlike our previous test motors, this was actually a solid roller, but it was a street roller, so it had milder ramps on it. The 286 featured a 612-621 lift split, a 248-254 degree duration split, and a fairly tight 110 degree load separation angle. Now this uh, obviously was run with solid lifters and we had to adjust the push rods just like we did in all the others. We also ran on this one a single plane intake. It was an Edelbrock Victor Jr. and a 950 HP Holly with inch and three quarter headers and an MSD distributor. So the first thing that we did, as we always have, uh, we put a set of um, valve springs on it that would accommodate this lift on the factory heads, which was <laughs> no easy task because who runs a 600 plus lift solid roller cam with stock E7TE heads? But that's us, guilty as charged. So run with the stock iron E7TE heads. And, the, and again, these are the same heads that we ran on all of the other combinations. We just continued running these heads again and again on our 392. Equipped with uh, the stock heads, this combination produced, are you ready for this? 387 horsepower with the stock head. Remember I talked about, if you haven't taken a look at it, look at the test or the video on the group two heads. When you're when you've got a lot of draw on the heads, you can obviously improve the flow rate. So at 166 CFM, we made 387 horsepower with this big stroker motor. Not that that's a good application for it, but it made good torque. And we made over 450 foot pounds with those heads. But as you can see, the power fell off pretty hard. And you'll see on the first set of heads um, what the difference is putting a, a you know a decent set of heads. And the first one is from Edelbrock. These were Victor Jr. heads. <laughs> and it should be fairly obvious that the, you know, the heads made a big difference on our 392 stroker. Equipped with the Edelbrock heads, these things made 522 horsepower and 499 foot-pounds of torque. So just right under 500 foot-pounds of torque. So it's a healthy little 392, 393 stroker, um, you know, 522 horsepower. And you can see it's carrying power out past 6,500. So it would rev out there really nicely. This is a good combination. Let's take a look at our next set of heads. The next head run on our 351 stroker was from Airflow Research. And these were the 205 heads. These obviously, they come from Airflow Research CNC ported. The 205 heads flow obviously very well. And they responded very well on this stroker motor. Here are the Airflow Research Heads. You can see they picked up power. We started this run at 3,500 and ran all the way out to 6,500. This thing made 555 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 515 horsepower. Again, power through the whole curve. You know, and if you're guys that are concerned about what did it make at 2,000 RPM, a solid roller cam <laughs> with this kind of head and, and a single plane intake manifold. You shouldn't be really running at wide open throttle at 2000 RPM. But this is where we tested it back in the day. And it, and it shows, obviously, we kind of nailed it as to where the this thing wants to run with that cam and these heads and that intake manifold because this is this is kind of the power curve. So if you're running this thing to the quarter mile, you'd be accelerating this in, in, in kind of this range. But the Airflow Research head did well, as we have come to expect. How do you guys like my uh, fancy new mic? Here, check that out. Whoa, mic, mic, mic. So let me know how it sounds. If it sounds any different than it did before, I'm moving it around, so it might have a little bit of noise. But let me know what you guys think about the audio, and I can make adjustments. Let's get to our next set of cylinder heads. Our next set of heads came from Dart, and they were part of the Pro 1 series. So let's take a look at the power gains offered by the Dart heads. Again, good power, good, you know, the Dart heads work really, and this is a good combination, so they could take advantage of the Airflow offered by those heads. These were these were Dart Pro One Two Tens, so a little bit bigger than the Two O Fives offered by Airflow Research. The combination made five hundred and thirty-five horsepower, and peak torque checked in at five hundred and ten foot-pounds of torque. And you can take a look at the flow rates and chamber sizes and kind of correlate with this power gain. But as you can see, these heads offer a lot of power. I mean, we went from 387 horsepower to in this case 535 so it's a big gain from a cylinder head change but obviously <laughs> we were handicapping our our 351 windsor stroker with the stock iron heads and having a good set of heads goes a long way let's take a look at our next set after running our dart pro one heads it was time to install a set from brodex and these were track one m2 heads so let's take a look and see how the brodex heads did Just like the others, you know, big power gains, no losses, even down 3,500. Equipped with the Brodex heads, we made 538 horsepower. 
Peak torque checked in at 514 foot-pounds of torque. And I think that there might have been a little bit more power to be had from the Brodex heads. Um, this kind of looks like uh, maybe valve spring control out here. So unfortunately, I didn't test that way back then. <laughs> then I should have looked at that maybe more closely. But I think that they probably had a little bit more in them. They certainly flowed well. And, you know, the Brodex guys, they, they know how to make power. It always works out pretty well. So maybe with some springs, we might have saw some more. But this is some, again you know, huge power gains with just changing the cylinder head on our 351 stroker. Let's get to our next set. The final two heads run on our 392 stroker were the TrickFlow twins, starting with the high port heads. And obviously the TrickFlow Rs will come next. That's the reason that we had to put the other valve relief in the piston. So let's take a look at our high ports first. And I've got a soft spot in my heart <laughs> for the high ports. That was actually the first set of aluminum heads that I ever put on my 1988 5-liter LX Mustang. And it ran good. We ran out the Silver State, did a ton of stuff with it. And that was those were the uh, TFS KPI heads, KPI for Kaufman Products. And that was kind of all that was available back in the day when we first put those on. But they work well. And we I had a, a Vortex Supercharger on it and that... Um, you know, that uh, 224, 232 cam. We ran out of the Silver State, did a bunch of cool stuff with it, and it ran good. So equipped with the TrickFlow high port heads, and again, these were um, as cast and not ported, 512 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 590 or 498 foot-pounds. And again, if you look out at the top here, I this seems like a little suspect here. Maybe might be a, a little bit of a valve spring control issue or something, but the rest of the curve actually looks pretty good. The high ports didn't do quite as well as I thought that they would, although there are a lot of good guys and there were and there were back in the day also guys that were porting these heads and making some serious power. Uh, with the high port heads because it was kind of a go-to head for the inline Windsor crowd and it, it works out really good. So let's check in, let's check out and see how the GFSR heads did. The final set of heads run in group three came from TrickFlow also. They're part of the uh, TrickFlow twins. <laughs> they were the TFSR heads. And you know, having run these over and over again, we always expect big things from them. And this was a perfect example of how they perform equip, equipped with the TrickFlow R heads. Our combination made 561 horsepower, which I think was the highest of the group. You guys can take a look at the data and make sure that I'm telling the truth there. And 519 foot-pounds of torque. They improved power everywhere, even down at 3,500. And they had uh, plenty of peak power, and we only ran this thing to 6,500. They obviously would rev higher than that, but I think we were, we were already at the torque peak, and it was kind of falling off. I mean, even though this was a fairly healthy, you know, street roller cam, it was not big by any stretch of the imagination, especially for something that had this many cubic inches. But those are all of our heads. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about these cylinder heads on our small block forward in group three? I mean, these were pretty good cylinder heads. We're talking about heads that had 200 cc intake port volumes and some of the heads flowed over 300 CFM. So obviously they were able to support some fairly good power. Now, one of the requests I got on the previous test that I did on the previous videos was, hey, can you list all the heads and the power gains that they offered in order so that we can talk about the power gains? And here's why I hesitate doing that. Well, the problem is that if I give you the power number, okay, this head made 50 horsepower and this one made 52 horsepower and this one made 54 horsepower. The problem is that's a very small portion of what actually happened during the test. Let me give an example. If I were to tell you that a camshaft adds 47 horsepower, you'd go, oh yeah, I really want that cam. Well, what if I didn't tell you that also in addition to that 47 horsepower that it gained, it also lost 35 horsepower. And that's why I show you guys the whole curve because it tells the whole story, basically. It's very important to note when you gain power and when you lose power or when you gain a little bit of power here and a lot of power here, whatever the situation is, the power curve tells you basically the whole story. And that's what I want. If I just give you the peaks, that information is going to be disseminated out there. And I just don't think that that paints an accurate picture. So that's why I haven't done this little list. That's why I like to give you guys the whole curve. I go to the trouble of giving you as much data as I can so it paints an accurate picture. But let me know if I did something right. Let me know if I did something wrong, as always, in the comments. But make sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell. More testing for Group 4 coming up.